right, man, let's just get to it. It was another day in court. Kelsey wasn't there. She testified yesterday. We got DNA experts, and we had the prosecution being able to play Kelsey's 80-minute-long 80, 80 video that she sat down with them in September where she admitted Tori shot Meg. She said she saw Tori shoot Meg. Meg threatened to shoot her. But we'll read it all in this bombshell interview with ex, uh, with Meg the Stallion's ex-pal played at Tory Lane's trial. He was shooting. So before we get into it, I was going to make my point. I don't know how damning this is. I've been seeing multiple different YouTubers. Some people say it looks like Tori's going to get away with it. Some people saying that this is damning. I just, me personally, don't see how. Even though they're playing this interview and Kelsey's saying this happened, Kelsey's showing true, genuine emotion. She's saying, I want to be free from this. She's crying. They're still recording. She's crying still when they're gone. So it, it could seem to be that it's not an act, that something right now could be, uh, could be going on to make her change her testimony. But at that point still, you would have to agree that she's an unreliable witness and it would shed doubt on everything going on. So that's my, that's my, that's my point about the trial up to this point. So let's read this. So, in a damaging day for Tory Lanez, defense jurors heard audio from the blow by blow interview that Megan Thee Stallion's former friend Kelsey Harris gave to prosecutors last September in which she vividly recalled the shooting that left Megan with a gunshot wound to both feet. The recording was played in the courtroom uh, after Harris took the witness stand this week and recanted nearly everything she said in September. Harris, also known as Kelsey Nicole, was uh, heard on recordings corroborating Meg's prior testimony that Lanez, whose legal name is Daystar Peterson, opened fire on the sweetie Sweetest Pie rapper. I don't know why the fuck they did that song, but like, uh, okay. Anyway, that doesn't even matter. But like, why? And all the songs Meg got, Sweetest Pie, that's the record that they're going to use in the Rolling Stone article, but whatever. So jurors listened with rapt attention in the September 14, 2022 interview, following along with the transcript. In the auto, Harris recalled leaving a pool party at Kylie Jenner's house in a Cadillac Escalade with Megan Peterson and a driver identified as Jaquan Smith. And it looks like also Jaquan Smith is not going to be brought to the stand. Now, I don't know who that looks good for. I don't know if that looks good for Meg. I don't know if that looks good for Tori. But it looks like that they're not being brought to the stand. But well, we can get in that uh, a little bit later. So, anyways, Harris told the prosecutors a fight broke out inside the SUV and that she stepped in to defend Meg when Peterson started disrespecting her. I said, you're not going to talk to my friend like that, she recalled on the recording. Honestly, when I argue, I can say things that are hurtful, too. She said Peterson then told her he was from Canada. And said, anyway, Canadians were gangsters. So I was like, what? Like, I'm from Canada? Like, all right. Right, like nobody thinks of fucking Canada and we think of like, you know, danger. We think of like maple syrup. We think of uh, uh, hockey. We think of like nice things we think of Canada. Like if you just said like I'm from Compton, I'm from Chirac, like those maybe would have struck a little bit of fear in somebody. But when you, when you run around saying I'm from Canada, we don't know the hoods of Canada. Canada doesn't seem like a very scary place that we need to be worried about. But anyways... He said, my nigga, I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you. Taylor Harris, I'll shoot you. He said that to me, and he reached like he was going to grab something, uh, reached toward the middle console, which, you know, you're in the car, you're in the driver's seat, there's a passenger, and you got the middle console. So it's seemingly like she's claiming the gun was most likely in the middle console. But he never pulled anything. She said, Peterson never opened the console. I was like, okay, if you shoot me, I guess it's my time to go. If you shoot me, just know I have people that will ride behind me, my support. So she's like, she, she like fucking with like you kill me cool kill me but I got people who's gonna come get you that's essentially what that back and forth looks like so Harris told prosecutors Megan then got out of the SUV returned a short time later and the fighting resumed and this is when they claim Meg said pull this motherfucker over and she went and sat at a bus stop or something like that at this point they were arguing about each other's artistry and this is the conversation we've been hearing about that she's dissing them saying your music whack or you ain't hot or whatever whatever she's telling them you're only this and that because you remix as Jack Harlow. Harris told prosecutors they were just hitting each other over their careers. So let me, I just want to respond. To it. Like, like I do think the Tory Lanez had like diversity here due to the Jack Harlow thing. But Tory Lanez still makes good music. Does he make super big hit records? No, have I always been a, a big fan of Tory Lanez? No. But he makes good music. He has some pretty big records that are out here that are moving around. Now, I believe this is the time, obviously, quarantine radio is popping off. So you could say maybe he was more known at the time for being a personality than being a, a musician just because that was the nature of social media in 2020. People was getting on live. That Boosie was going crazy on live, getting banned on live. Like At this point, artists had to show personality more than music. People was alone. People was in their homes with nothing to do. So these lives were bringing joy to thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. Tori, don't forget, Tori was getting hundreds of thousands of people watching the quarantine radios at that time. 
So at that time, you could really say maybe musically Meg was more hot because she had the song with Beyonce. But as a personality, Tory Lanez was, was right there with her. So Harris said Peterson then ordered Smith to stop the vehicle because he wanted the women out of his car. He said, this is my car. Smith pulled over and Megan jumps out of her seat when she was in the front. I get out of my side and no sooner do you know, you start hearing gunshots going off. I looked up maybe about the second or third gunshot. You see Tory. He's now in the front seat. I guess he must have jumped over in smooth transition and he's leaning over the door. He said saying the door is open at this point. He's shooting over the top of the door, Harris told prosecutors. He's leaning over the front passenger door and he was shooting the gun. Harris described her own position as being outside the car, but still behind her passenger door in very close proximity to gunfire. Megan was walking away when this happened, but by the third or fourth shot, she was facing towards us. So they're saying she was walking away. She got three, four shots wearing off, and then she was looking back. This does lead me to believe that she wasn't directly shot. And I've already kind of assumed that and seen that through what her injuries look like. Looks like Tory Lanez, possibly, allegedly, shot at the ground. Bullets, obviously, shrapnel goes everywhere. And it tears through her feet. So Harris described her own position as being outside the car, but still behind her passenger door in very close proximity to the gunfire. Megan was walking away, and she described it as Meg was looking like a deer in the headlights when she turned around and seen Tori with a gun. The way Tori was angling the gun, it wasn't like straight. It was like down definitely in her direction, she told the prosecutors. And she didn't hear Peterson say anything as far as dance, bitch. Peterson listened to the recording while seated at the defense table on the fifth day of his felony assault trial. The Love rapper has pleaded not guilty to three felony charges in the high-profile case. Assault with a firearm causing great bodily harm, concealing a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle, and then recently added discharging a firearm with gross negligence. That's what I think they're trying to really get him on. Because like I said, shooting at the ground, not necessarily trying to really hit you, but something does end up actually affecting, uh, affecting you. So... The L.A. County Superior Judge uh, uh, ruled late Thursday that he uh, would allow jurors to hear the full recording after he initially excluded it. Prosecutors played a small portion of it Wednesday, but Hereford appeared to shut it down during a sidebar. Harris repeatedly said she remembered making her September statements, but stated she hadn't been truthful. That's why I'm curious to how, how, can, that, how can that play in the jury's head? How, does it, how, how can you really convince a jury that, you know, hey, this person on the stand right now, they're saying they didn't do, they, 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 they lied when they said these statements, but we're going to play it for you anyways in hopes that you believe the statements that a person just got on the stand and said that they lied about, that's where the confusion kind of comes in for me. Right? So I want to get into the other people that were there and the other people that they spoke to because they spoke to a gun expert, a DNA expert, and it looks like those things didn't go as planned as they wanted. Right? So let's go ahead and get back on this and we'll see. So, after playing the recording, prosecutors called a pair of LAPD criminologists to the witness stand Friday. One testified that the four bullet casings recovered at the scene of the shooting were matched to the 9mm semi-automatic handgun recovered from the floor of the Escalade, where Peterson had been seated. The other criminologist told jurors that DNA testing on the gun was inconclusive as the, as the Peterson, but that Peterson DNA was not detected on the gun's magazine. So they're, they're throwing these things there on social media for you, like, oh, his DNA was not found on the, on the, in the magazine, right? So they confirm that he was not a person who has charged the gun, has like, you know, obviously put the bullets in it and did that. Right. But the, the, the DNA on the gun actually is inconclusive. They can't really tell if it's his or if it's not. So that doesn't mean technically that his DNA isn't on the gun. It just means that they, there's no way they can really determine if it is. Now, obviously if you're a team tour, you're going to take it as it's not there. But if you think about it objectively, it's just, you can't tell. Now it is good for Tory Lanez. Because as a juror, once again, you have something else that would lead you to have some type of reasonable doubt, especially when they do say that there is female DNA on the gun as well, which could go to your defensive theory of Kelsey shot it. So my thing is, at the beginning, they say all this damning testimony, all this damning testimony going on for Tory Lanez. How can it be damning when there's just so much reasonable doubt shaking through this case? You literally have your star witness going back on statements she made in September. Then she goes on to say she don't remember stuff. She goes on to say she lies. She goes on to say that, oh, she felt pressure by you and this and that. So then the defense calls its own DNA expert out of order Friday afternoon. He testified that he agreed with the findings of the LAPD testing, but added that while Peterson couldn't be ruled out as having contributed to the mix of DNA found on the gun, he would have expected a clear, conclusive result if Peterson had actually fired the weapon five times. So that means what he's saying is if Tory Lance actually shot that gun, gripped it, held it, Pulled that trigger because it says you need eight and a half pounds of pressure. He did all that. 
there'd been more likely of a chance that the DNA, his DNA, wouldn't have been inconclusive. It would have been conclusive. Also, the mix of DNA on the gun included a profile from an unidentified woman. Now, people may try to claim that, well, this guy is hired, right? He's not the states. He's not the police. He's an expert who was hired by these people. And I was watching a guy who was saying that this guy gets paid $6,000 to come up here and testify. $6,000 to come up here and testify on behalf of the defense. Because obviously the defense can't use the same people that the prosecutors are using, so they have to use outside money and influence to get their people. So people may try to, oh, it's skewed or whatever, but essentially he's saying the same thing that the prosecution is saying as far as it's inconclusive. He's just adding the element that we also found female DNA, which once again, I feel like that, just that statement alone right there, that they have found female DNA on that gun, and they didn't test Kelsey. They didn't test Kelsey and her DNA against the gun. Another layer on the mountain of shit for this case, another mountain of negligence by the police force and investigators and the prosecutors as well. Because you would think the prosecutors would have this shit lined up in a row. And I get it. Maybe they thought when they had Kelsey in September, this was a bombshell case. There's nothing they can do to stop this case. It's going down. We're going to win. We're going to win, no doubt. But there's a lot of holes that y'all miss. Like you, I feel like you should be able to, to, you should be able to pivot for the holes. Kelsey shouldn't have been their own their home run. If they was begging on Kelsey's statements alone, I feel like that's still a little bit shaky. It's still a little bit shaky because Tory's team could go in there and still try to make it seem regardless of what Kelsey's saying. You could just make it seem like Kelsey's trying to save her own ass, right? To not get charged with whatever. But now that she flipped and swapped. Gave attitude from what people are saying. People seem like they were tired of her. They didn't like her as a witness. It don't matter really what she said in September anymore. Because there's too much reasonable doubt. So they're going to come back. I believe they said they're going to come back Tuesday. They're going to resume. The witness is supposed to be taking the stand. Especially with the witness. The witness said he saw two women fighting. The witness said he thought he saw the muzzle flash come from the woman's side. Once again. More reasonable doubt on this pile shit of a case. And if you're a person who can't really see through the lines, and this ain't even me saying Tory didn't shoot her. But at the end of the day, if you're a person in this country, you want to make sure if you're ever in this situation, that these motherfuckers got to prove you did it. And unfortunately for Meg, if Tory did shoot her, it's looking like they can't prove that shit happened. Or at least they can say you got shot. We see that. Gunshots went off. We see the shrapnel. You got shot. But the problem is we don't know who. Know who. Tory seems to, if he did allegedly shoot Meg, Megan Kelsey gave him the best Christmas gift he could have ever wanted. Because once it's over, you can't retry him. You can't retry him. You can't come back and try to get him. It's over. Tory Lanez could go in the rest of his life knowing that he shot Meg the Stallion, allegedly, and know he got away with it because he had two, from what they're describing, a bitter best friend and a backstabbing best friend fighting against each other, battling against each other more than against the guy that allegedly shot you right i was watching a guy who's speaking about what's going on in the court he's he's telling everybody you know it seemed like kelsey's really mad meg wasn't defending her when these things were going on meg wasn't letting people know that that kelsey wasn't the shooter even though she did come out and point out that tory shot her like i don't understand why i have to say that kelsey if i'm saying tory shot me that means that kelsey didn't shoot me right that's what i would think but also that she got mad because meg came out and said that to kelsey after months of not really speaking that you need to make a statement you need to tell everybody what happened that night. Because obviously, if Meg says it, people aren't going to believe it. And Tory, obviously, he's gagged. He can't speak. So I need you to speak. And that's the one problem that I feel like Meg should probably take from this moving forward. You got to not give a fuck what social media says. Social media is not real life. The people that are clowning you, calling you Megan the horse, you a lying ass bitch, yeah, whatever they're saying to you, at the end of the day, they don't genuinely care about how you how this goes for you anyways. They're just joining in on the internet. They're just joining on the internet. We're ending that shit. It's ending that shit. We're joining in on the conversation. Motherfuckers at school all day, hate their life, they at work all day. What's going on? What's popping on social media? Oh, this is fun. Oh, she's lying. He's lying. Who did it? Who shot? It's a game to most people on social media. It's not real. It's real to you. But you allowed yourself to partake in that game and now you better lose this trial. Now, I know it, I know it ain't Meg versus Tory. It's Tory versus State of California. But on social media, is Meg versus Tory. And then when you lose this, 
your credibility is going to be out the window because you're too worried about early on trying to, you know, combat these same people who really wasn't going to give a fuck at the end anyways. That's where she made that mistake. So last thing I'm going to get into, and I'm not really going to dive into much, but the, the 1501 conspiracy that I spoke about, the 1501 conspiracy that I spoke about, it came out today that Kelsey's husband is a music manager in Houston, and he's affiliated, and he's an executive with 1501. If you don't know, 1501 was the, me- the label that put Megan on, got Megan going. And now Kelsey Harris has a baby and is married with someone who has a vested interest from what we've seen in 1501 itself. Now, obviously, she's been married to this guy before. She already had a baby with him before. She did the September thing. But possibly, it's, hey, let's go in here. Let's tell them one thing. Let's get the trial and ruin her credibility. If she going to think she's going to skip out on us and go over to Rock Nation and take all that, make the stallion money, take all that ad money, L'Oreal, or whatever ad, whatever she's doing, take all that money and give it to Jay-Z and Rock Nation and not the hometown team here in Houston. Well, that bitch got another thing coming because maybe she wins that lawsuit in January when her and Carl Croft go to, go, go to court. Maybe she wins that lawsuit. But if we can wreck her credibility here, if we can ruin her credibility here, her career won't even matter going forward. And that may be all we want to need. And that's just a conspiracy. That's all alleged. I have no knowledge. But I did say that before all this shit came out about her husband being a part of this. I even know her husband was uh, allegedly a part of 1501 in some type of manner. But y'all all got the Rock Nation conspiracies. Y'all got the Rock Nation. But well, maybe we got to look at the 1501. So, that's all I got for you guys, man. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. It's your boy D-Friend. Peace. Mm-hmm.